The Holy Gospel for the ninth Sunday after Trinity comes from the 16th chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the first verse. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward, because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. But thou, o Lord, have mercy upon us. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus himself explains the meaning of the parable in the last verse, so that we do not get carried away with strange interpretations. He says, I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. If we apply this saying to the rest of the parable, we will be able to distinguish the good from the bad. Our Lord does not teach that it is acceptable to waste our employer's goods. He does not teach that we may use someone else's property for our own ends. Yes, even if that end is a good and charitable one. For the seventh commandment divinely protects each one's personal property. If you want to be generous, and you should be generous, you must be generous with your own property. Likewise, he does not defend lying. Even if a lie seems beneficial for the moment, we must not do it, since the Eighth Commandment forbids this. Our Lord calls the steward unjust, so that we would not imitate his bad behavior. But the one thing that he did, which was commendable, was in making friends by generosity. Notwithstanding that he did this by lying and stealing his master's property, he did not squander it on pleasures. But his shrewdness for the future drove him to be generous toward those in debt. We are called to imitate his shrewdness, but not his wickedness. 
what the steward did out of fear and self-interest, we must do out of love and thanksgiving. And for this reason, our Lord concludes, Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Now, mammon means the money and possessions of this world. Our Lord calls it unrighteous, not because wealth and possessions are wicked in themselves, for David prays in our Old Testament lesson, both riches and honor come from you. Rather, our Lord calls mammon unrighteous because it is an adiaphron, an indifferent thing, and not to be confused with the truly righteous things, faith, God's word, and obedience to God's law. The word adiaphra is not found in scripture, although the concept is there. But it comes from Greek philosophy. For the Greeks, an adiaphron was something with no moral value, which ought rightly to be sacrificed for the sake of doing what was morally good. They spoke of life as an adiaphron, because it was better to die than to do what was immoral. And this coming from the Greeks, who for their part had no certain hope of a life after death, and whom we know are damned because they did not believe in the Christ. How much more, then, should we gladly sacrifice life, mammon, and reputation, if it means honoring Christ and serving our neighbor, since we have the certainty of everlasting life and also of rewards for such sacrifice in the life to come. There are two kinds of errors when it comes to adiaphra, to indifferent things. One is legalism, and the other, pietism. Legalism demands as necessary something which is actually an adiaphron, such as thou shalt worship on Saturday, or Sunday, for that matter. Pietism, on the other hand, forbids something which is an adiaphron, such as thou shalt not drink. One demands and the other forbids. But they are really two sides of the same error, because both are about wrongly applying God's law in ways that God did not intend. And, practically speaking, nearly all legalists are also pietists, and vice versa. Now, because the Lutheran Church has had to address these errors throughout her history, we are more likely to talk about our freedom in adiaphora, that we are free to do or not do them. What we are in danger of forgetting is that adiaphora are things which ought to be sacrificed for our neighbor's good. Thus we have St. Paul, who declares in 1 Corinthians 8.13, 
Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. The unjust steward in today's gospel used the adiaphron of mammon wisely. That is, he sacrificed it for the benefit of others in the hope of a future reward. For him, his future reward was that others would take care of him. For us, the future reward is eternal heavenly blessings. Therefore, we, even more eagerly, ought to sacrifice these temporal and earthly things for the sake of the Christ and the neighbor. The fact that we have a hard time parting with Adiaphra is a sign of the depth of our sin. We hate parting with money and property. We hate having our pleasures interrupted. This shows how idolatrous our hearts are. Mammon and all Adiaphra come from God. He gives these things to us, yes, for our enjoyment, but also that we may have something to sacrifice out of love. He who gives his possessions for his neighbor loves his neighbor more than his possessions. Likewise, he who gives of his time for his neighbor loves his neighbor more than his own leisure. And if you give of what is yours for your neighbor out of faith, this shows that you love God more than your possessions. Love shows itself in sacrifice. Now God is love in the most perfect and absolute sense. But we would not know it unless he himself sacrificed for us, as it is written. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, this is clear also in human affairs, that where there is love, there is sacrifice. Parents sacrifice wealth, time, and even bodily health for their children. And it is plain that a parent who is unwilling to sacrifice for his children is a bad parent. Adiaphra are given so we would have something to sacrifice. Thus writes St. Paul concerning wealth. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. God gives us mammon so that we may share it. But idolatry comes in when we choose to love mammon more than our neighbor. Ultimately, our Lord Jesus Christ, in teaching the parable of the unjust steward, teaches about himself. There is no sin in him, but it is he who sacrificed his heavenly glory for a time that he might give to us sinners the gifts of God. Philippians chapter 2 says, 
Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name. These words describe the Lord's state of humiliation. When he, from the time of his conception to the time of his burial, did not make full use of his divine power, in order that he might suffer with us the consequences of our sin and die to repay our debt to the Father. Because of this great sacrifice, God the Father has exalted him as both God and man. It is his sacrifice, the proof of his love, which is the reason for this exaltation. In the same way, the saints in heaven praise the Lord Jesus Christ specifically for his sacrifice, saying, in the words of Revelation chapter 5, You are worthy, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Following then our Savior's example, to be shrewd with earthly mammon, and with anything which is an adiaphron, means to sacrifice it out of love. This does not mean that we should not enjoy God's earthly gifts, but it does mean that the noblest and best use of those gifts is for others. And each of us is called to sacrifice our adiaphra according to each one's vocation. Parents for their children, children for their parents, spouse for spouse, and everyone for his neighbor. Wealth and all other things we have in this short life are given us that we may have something to sacrifice. And we should do this not to win any kind of favor from God, but out of love to imitate our Savior Jesus Christ, who, for love of us sinners, sacrificed his own self so that we may enjoy the eternal blessings of heaven. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.